Now that we have downloaded the blade geometry from the geometry section of the tutorial, let's import it into our project. To do this, right click on geometry, then mouse over import geometry and select browse. Now go find your file. Mine is into downloads. Okay, the geometry successfully imported because we now have a green check mark here. What we now need to do is to create a fluid geometry all around this blade. We'll need to work with the geometry we just imported, so let's double click on geometry to open up Design Modeler. So first off, you might see a second blade right here, and the brown one. So this is simply a ghost image, and it's a problem specific to this geometry file. If you change the view setting to wireframe, it will go away. Um, you can then change the view back to shaded exterior edges. Okay, so now let's go over a few things so that you become more familiar with this model. On the right, so right here, you should see the blade model. This is what will be used in the FEA portion of the simulation. If you click on the button from the scrolling wheel of your mouse, you can rotate this blade. You can also zoom in and out by scrolling. But my preferred way is by right clicking and dragging to box zoom. Like this. And just so you know, all the view options are located right here. So when the rotate um, button is selected and you left click on your model this sphere will appear and this indicates that you will rotate about this location in space so this is very handy so if we take a close look at our geometry we see that we have a spar inside of the blade we also notice that the blade has uh, some twist If you look in the tree outline, you're going to see the modeling steps that were taken in making this blade. These steps are in order that they were added, and they actually have precedence, so steps often depends on earlier steps. At the bottom of the tree outline, you'll see a different section, and this is where all the bodies are created. These can be lines, surfaces, or solid bodies and bodies can be grouped together into a multi-body part, like here. This makes the bodies be aware of each other for connections and meshing purposes. Making a part is easy, you simply have to select a few parts, and then you would right-click and select form a new part. The bodies that make up the uh, blade have been grouped into a part that is called part 5. And so the bodies located here are not of interest to us and we will never use them. They have actually been suppressed already, denoted by this X next to it. Modeling steps and bodies can be suppressed at any time and you can perform these actions by simply um, right clicking on it and selecting this option. and you can unsuppress and suppress bodies anytime you want. So this is like a form of delete, but it doesn't completely delete it. You can easily um, bring it back. Okay, so let's now focus our attention on our part. Um, let's first give it a better name. So you can go click on this part and you can either change the name right here or you can right click it and select rename. Um, let's rename it Blade CFD. So each surface body represents a different surface on this blade. To be able to better determine what each surface represents, you can select to 
view the model in wireframe and this makes it a lot easier. You can now see that the first four surface bodies make up this bar in addition to um, this surface. These two make up the enclosure of the blade and so etc. You get the idea. You can hide bodies and show bodies really easily by right clicking and selecting the appropriate option. I hope this helps you uh, get more familiar with this model.